If you've been following along with the series, play listen to the cards now. We just defeated Baroth in the quest leading the charge. Our next target is Lagombi in the quest, the Snowbound Slider. This will be our last key quest before we unlock the urgent quest for the Three Star Village, which will be against Arathian. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'll be using Gunlance and the Baroth armor for this one for two reasons. One, we just fought Baroth and I wanted to use his armor set, and two, I want to show that even though the lance weapons are quite slow and the Gombi is quite fast, you can still do well enough with this matchup. To make the Baroth armor, this is what you'll need. The Gunlance I will be using is a Yukimo Burst. Keep in mind that some weapon translations may be different, unfortunately. To get the Yukimo Burst, you can first either buy or craft the Yukimo Gunlance. This will take either 1500Z from the weapon shop, or half that, and 3 Yukimo wood and iron ore if you want to craft it instead. Yukimo wood can be carved from some wood in various areas, such as from areas 4, 5, and 9 in the mountain stream. Iron ore is obtained by mining. Then upgrade it to the Yukimo Gunlands Plus, which will require 1000Z and 5 Macalite ore, Yukimo wood, and nitrous rooms. Macalite ore is less common than iron ore, but keep mining and you'll get enough eventually, along with other useful ores. Remember to mine in your farm in between gathering quests. Nitrous rooms can be obtained from mushroom spots. Remember the one in your farm as well. Make sure you have at least mushroom tree plus one or you won't get any here. Then upgrade it to the Yukimo Burst, which will require 2000 Z, one light crystal, 10 Macalite ore and Yukimo wood, and three flintstone. Light crystals are kind of rare and come from mining. I'd recommend going to the tundra since I know you can get them from there. Don't forget hot drinks. The flintstone is from Kuropeko. This one can be annoying to get, depending on your luck. Try to break both of its wings and capture it for a higher chance of getting some. In some cases, if a monster is too fast and aggressive, using a slower weapon actually works in your favor. Instead of you both being fast and having to match their pace with your own speed, which can be harder, you can do the opposite and slow way down, and have them move around you, bringing the pace of the fight down and giving you more time to think and react. In some cases, for example with Lance vs Tigrex and Freedom Unite, the monster basically kills himself on you. And that's the idea anyways.
The blue box gives us hot drinks and sonic bombs. Hot drinks keep your stamina from draining in cold areas. The sonic bombs can be used on Legambi. If you haven't fought Legambi yet, go to area 2 and a cutscene will play. Otherwise, go to area 3. First things first, take care of the small monsters. The melings here can steal items from you, so they're particularly troublesome. If one of them grabs an item of yours, knock them out to get it back, or you can retrieve it from their stash in Area 1. There's not a whole lot to say about Lagambi. If anything, this is a test of your ability to recognize an opening. If you're not paying enough attention to your positioning and the monster's patterns, you may find it difficult to attack without being hit. You may as well use the Sonic Bomb. If you're not able to top one with it, that's okay. It'll still give you an opening. Remember, it won't work if Legambi is enraged. You can tell if Legambi is enraged because you'll be able to see his breath. If you want to focus on just taking out Legambi, you should focus on his rear. I'm trying to hit his head when I can, to break his ears. I'm sure there's probably a better combo to get to the full burst, but I'm still not used to 3rd gen gun lines to be honest. If nothing else, I guess it makes it more genuine, like someone newer is playing. Unfortunately, I hit his claw there. You've got to be pretty precise to hit his head. When using Lance and Gun Lance, you need to know when you're safe to come out from your shield. With such great defense, it's a lot safer to be aggressive, funnily enough. Using the guard from the upward poke is integral to effective gunlands usage. It's seriously game changing, don't forget it. Legambi has run here to find food to refill his stamina. He doesn't eat meat. If you drop meat bait, he won't take it.
Oof. I let go of R and almost didn't block again in time. I'm gonna wait a bit. I'm sure he wants to go to sleep in Area 6. I want him to go there first. Bet you didn't know Monster Hunter was a stealth game. Now I'm just going to wait for him to go to where he sleeps first. If you don't know, I'm doing this because the attack that wakes up monsters will deal more damage. And there we go. If you can keep an eye out for his sliding and position yourself accordingly, you shouldn't have too much trouble fighting Legambi. If nothing else, if you're still having trouble, you may just need to slow down a bit. Instead of playing catch up with Legambi, let him come to you. To make either version of the Lagambi armor, this is what you'll need. The Lagambi parts are all from Lagambi, huge surprise there. The baggy hides and scales are from Baggy, again very surprising. You can find Baggy in the Tundra. Whenever farming for small monster parts, I recommend you find a quest that has you hunting those small monsters if you can. It'll increase the spawns for that monster so you can finish the quest, and you'll also get extra monster parts in a reward box at the end. Fortunately, there is a quest to hunt 10 Baggy and 3 Star Village called Hypnotic Blue. One or two clears of that quest should get you enough for the set. Velvety hides are from Giki. They're little leech creatures that you can find in the tundra. They come out of this egg thing, so you can kill and carve them until they stop respawning. If they stop respawning. Jumbo bones can be acquired from Pelagius monsters, such as Arzuros and Boldrum, or Lagombi. If you still need some after getting the other Lagombi parts, I'd recommend you keep hunting Lagombi until you get the rest. You may want Lagombi's weapons later on, or some decorations may take Lagombi parts, you never know. Isisium is just an ore type. You can find them in the tundra. Killer beetles can be found in the flooded forest and tundra, as well as the bug trapper in the farm. Right now we can only use the green shell bug perfume to have a chance at getting any. Use pollen if you have it, otherwise honey works fine too. Pollen can be obtained from the field and then planted in the field for more. Carpenter bugs are relatively common from bug net nodes. Using the shell bug perfume will also help you get some. Blademaster Lagambi armor is THE early game evasion armor. Evasion plus one will increase how many iframes you have when rolling, making it easier to roll through attacks. If that's all you need to hear, then go ahead and make the armor. It's not a bad reason to. If you don't want either of the two extra skills I'm going to mention, you can also slot in four evasion skills to get evasion plus two, which is what I'd recommend. The other skill it has is cold cancel. This is a bad skill on its own since you can get the same effect by using a hot drink. I'll stop clarifying eventually, but again, it's not a bad skill because no skills are really bad. They all have some effect that is useful. But in the greater context of the game, if you can get the same or similar effect with an item, since what armor skills you have are so important, you should avoid going for those skills specifically. You can get one of two extra skills with decorations. Ice Resistance plus 5 and Quick Sheath. Ice Resistance just requires one decoration, so if you have a weapon slot, you should put this there. There's not really a reason not to. Quick Sheath will make it faster to sheath your weapon. For melee weapons, on average the difference is about 27% faster, with the lowest being 24% or 6 frames with sword and shield, and the highest being 28% or 15 frames faster with switch axe. These are just ballpark numbers. My testing was by no means scientific. 
You can also slot in four evasion jewels. I'd recommend you get evasion plus two and the ice resistance plus five if you have a weapon slot, along with cold cancel. Really not a bad armor set if you like evading. Also, for great sword users or anyone else, if you really want quick sheath, by all means go ahead. You'll definitely sheath your weapon way more than other classes, but personally I don't think 11 frames is worth it if you have better options. If you're not going to use the evasion skills, you may as well use something with attack up, like the jaggy armor. The gunner armor has the same skills as the blade master one, with the same optional skills. For this one you can definitely consider using quick sheath for heavy bowgun. Heavy bowgun and solo play really struggles with mobility. Without the evade distance skill and maybe quick sheath, you're going to have a tough time staying alive. Heavy bowgun kind of shines more when the attention is at least split between different hunters and multiplayer. Or you can use felines. The difference between having quick sheath and not is around 29% on average for gunners, with heavy bowgun's 2 second sheath animation being cut to around a second and a half. Anyways, the skills and reasoning for them are the same as a blade master one. If you're using light bow gun or bow, I'd recommend you go for evade plus 2 and ice resistance plus 5, along with the included cold cancel. That's all for now. Until next time.